Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in this tutorial, uh, I think I'm going to try something different. Right now, usually what I do is I figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to do it beforehand. Uh, but I think I'm just going to do it during the video and to pause out the boring parts. So, yeah. Okay, well, I did, actually did a little bit of that beforehand and uh, made some changes to our move to destination method in our enemy class. Uh, so I basically put this other uh, conditional in the if statement. It says and finding equals false. Uh, basically what that means is I only want to oops yeah actually yeah so this this basically means I only want to find a new path this is finding a new path only if you're not finding anything already so if finding equals true that means that a uh, thread is running so let's go to our set path oh never mind it's actually done for us so never mind actually you know what no it's fine we can keep it like that so uh, it's going to run and it's going to start this thread find path and it's going to set fi finding to true and it's only going to set finding to false when the thread is done so basically we just don't want to start a bunch of threads over and over again uh, which is unnecessary and then I just added this if statement basically saying if path does not equal null just to make sure that if the path is not null and it's finding equals false it doesn't go over to these things or else it'll just error out so those are the main changes I have made and I'm not sure if you noticed but uh, we place the spawner at the location x50 and y50 and basically if the spawner is at that specific location uh, it's not able to find a path to the player because I think it's too close to the edge of the map and the wall so it's unable to find uh, a path so it keeps putting the path as null so uh, that's what it was doing there so that was uh all the changes I've made there so I'm just gonna run it again show you it works things like that so I just place the spawner right here so it's gonna spawn a guy who's gonna chase me all is good so uh, I'm gonna really focus on trying to make the map size bigger and trying to uh, make the the what do you call it thing faster the game faster because we're creating a new thread for every uh, enemy that's checking its path which I fo found that could get a little bit slow so I think we're gonna change it back to our queues so and try to figure out how to make it faster that way so first things first uh, just to get a bigger playing field let's uh, increase the map size uh, so to do that I'm just gonna go here I'm going to make it able so you're able to uh, change the map size within the XML file that we've created here. So uh, let's see. Let's create a new thing called uh, map. And I'm just going to create a new thing called size. And x equals. Let's see. I'll bring up my calculator here how many grid sizes do we want so each grid is 32 long we want it to be let's say 50 blocks long so it would be 1600 by 1600 that sounds good so 1600 x 1600 actually you know what instead of x let's just do width that makes more sense width 1600 height equals 1600 and if my mic dies randomly uh, it's running on a battery so uh, when I see my audio isn't doing anything I'll probably just replace my battery pause the video and I'll be back but uh, I'm just gonna put that out there just in case uh, my my voice gets cut off or something like that okay so 
uh, we have this right here and now we have to make it actually do something so let's go into our map reader and where is it okay uh, go into our read map uh, method and uh, find a spot to place it so this splits all objects sign x will test to variable okay uh, so instead of splitting all objects we'll have to create another uh, another method to do a similar thing so here okay so let's actually uh, modify this method a little bit by saying XML string equals XML string oops didn't want to do that XML string dot substring uh, we want us to start at the beginning of uh, of the object tag objects tag right here so XML string dot index of and it's gonna be objects it's gonna start right there and uh, we'll start plus one and actually we don't even really need that I'll just keep it in just in case uh, it doesn't hurt might make it slightly slower but it doesn't it won't even matter okay so then we want the length to be uh, the XML string dot index of the ending tag which is um, objects objects nope not like that like this okay the ending tag and plus one so that's basically what we're doing this is the maximum length of the string we want to capture and then we're going to uh, subtract it by uh, the start the starting place so that's going to be the length is the ending place subtracted by the starting place let me think that does that make sense yeah okay I think that makes sense okay so that's basically uh, so it doesn't mess around with this map thing right here uh, and we're gonna actually I'm just gonna copy this whole method and paste it here and I'm just gonna get say uh, set map and let's see uh, string array so yeah that's fine so we can have our string array no, actually we don't want this we don't need it and we don't need it to return anything so it's gonna be a subroutine okay don't need to return anything and XML string instead of objects we're gonna just change this to map so what it's gonna do is it's going to find the string in between the two map uh, tags so it's gonna find this string basically or more specifically this string right here uh, and now we're gonna try to get this size tag so we don't need these actually we're gonna change I'm just change this to map and this to map too. Okay, and I'm gonna change this to size and uh, get rid of all this. And this is what, what we want to do. Okay, um, first we want to find the position of this. So we have to say int position equals XML string dot index of uh, key split we'll just call this never mind I'll just keep it like that uh, so we got the position now now we want to find uh, width and height so I believe we made a get attribute method somewhere here I think so yeah get attribute okay so we're gonna use that 
Uh, you know, actually, we don't even need this right now. We just do this. Uh, get attribute uh, string. I don't know it. So get attribute. Sorry. Uh, okay, we want to get the width equals get attribute uh, XML string, and then the attribute name will be uh, width, just like in our XML file right here. Oh, I spelled width wrong. Okay. Okay, there we go. And now for height. Height equals get attribute XML string height. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our height, width, and height. And uh, almost forgot to convert it to an integer. So let's do convert dot to int. And actually, just make this a thirty-two. Convert to int thirty-two. Okay, there we go. So now we got the width and height of our map from uh, our XML file. So now we have to just apply that. Uh, and I believe we can get the map and map height from this right here, the room. So. Uh, I believe we just have to reset the room and we should be good. So, uh, game one dot room dot width equals width and game one dot room height equals height. Okay, there we go. So, this basically just resets. The width and height of the room to whatever we want. So uh, that's basically it. So uh, let's actually go ahead and test this out by putting a breakpoint in here. And I'm just gonna. Oh, actually, no, we haven't actually put this method in anywhere. So stop that and put it right here. Say uh, set map width <coughs> and height. Well. Set map, and we're gonna put our XML string here. Okay, uh, that should be good. So let's go ahead and debug it and see if it works. Okay, now I'm gonna step through this. I have to press these buttons because if I press F10, which is the debug hotkey, it will stop my recording. So. <laughs> Okay, let's look at our XML string right now. Uh, actually, that's not what we want. Uh, well, that's actually fine. It'll do the job, but it wasn't exactly what we were planning to have. Okay, oh well. Uh, hopefully, it'll still work. Yep, so we got uh, width 1600, height 1600, which is what we put in the XML file. So that worked. And now we just have to set room width and height. Okay, so that worked. And go test it as and the way we can really test it is by seeing where our bullets go. Remember our bullets get clipped uh, when they go outside the map. So as you can see it's pretty big now. So uh, now what I want to do is put our man in the middle pretty much of the map so he has a lot of room to move in so actually let's go ahead and go to our XML file and go to a man get my calculator here so oh, actually that's I'm gonna do it in my head 800 okay and then let's put our spawner just slightly offset so let's say uh, hmm 600 600 by 600 so it'll be offset to the top left and now we start debugging oops forgot to get rid of that breakpoint 
uh, it's to the top left. You see our, my bullets, they're not clipped because the map is large and I'm right in the middle of the map. And as you can see, the enemies are working fine. Uh, and yeah, so we got a lot of things done. We uh, f fixed a few minor bugs, uh, increased map size and added and uh, allowed our map reader to read our map. And next, uh, in the next tutorial, hopefully we'll be improving enemy AI or enemy efficiency or, and speed. Uh, basically just not make it lag so much and uh, maybe we'll be working on a map maker which will uh, make creating these maps and placing walls a lot easier rather than manually typing it in the XML file so until then uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, rating or comment uh, is great it helps support me and I'll see you in the next tutorial thank you bye